Okay, so today we're gonna start this winter scene of some white birch trees and snow. And then the sky is gonna be painted in either warm or cool colors. So the way that we start this assignment is the first thing you wanna do is decide on whether or not you wanna work horizontal or you wanna work vertical. My first example here that you see, we worked horizontal. So you can fit about four or five trees on. Or if you'd rather work vertical, this is what a vertical example looks like and you can fit about four trees on there. So in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and work vertical. You're going to start with using masking tape to tape off your trees. And I want you to show correct landscape proportions. So the trees that are closest to us are thicker than the trees that are farther away. And the trees that are closer to us go from the tippy top of our paper to the very bottom of our paper, all the way down. So that's how you're gonna show landscape proportion, show space, trees up close, trees in the background. So you're gonna start with some long pieces of masking tape. Your best bet is to tear the masking tape off and then press it down on the paper. Sometimes when you try to kind of use the roll and pull it across and tear, you mess up and end up wasting tape. And also what happens is then everyone at your table who's waiting on the tape, they're waiting on you. So if you could just quickly kind of tear off a couple of pieces and then pass the masking tape to the next person at your table, that would be very helpful. And I just usually tear off um, masking tape and hang it on the side of the table until I'm ready to use it. All right, so when you put these two pieces of masking tape side by side, press down, especially the seam, and they should reach the top and the bottom. These are your trees that are closest to you. Now you're gonna draw, or tape, some trees that um, are further back, so you're only, only gonna be using one piece of masking tape, and it's gonna start at the top of your paper, but it will not go all the way to the bottom of your paper like the trees up close. And these do not have to be the same length either. You can have some that are shorter and some that are taller. Okay, so now we need to add branches. So I'm gonna actually use some of this tape that's hanging off the bottom so I'm not wasteful and um, to create some branches. So you just take the pieces of masking tape and you cut them in half vertical so that you get skinnier pieces of masking tape that are skinnier than your smallest tree. And then I take and I cut it at an angle a diagonal so you get this little point and then when I tape these down onto the tree for tree branches I press down and I put the pointy part out that's the tip of the branch and I make sure that they're angled up towards the sun the way that real tree branches grow they grow up towards the sun so you don't need a ton of tree branches the more tree branches you do it just creates more work for you because you have to do more cutting and more taping so as long as you have a few tree branches on most of your trees, maybe not even all of your trees, that's okay. And they can touch and overlap and run into other trees. That would create the illusion that this is a real tree as well. Okay, so that's probably enough tree branches. Now I'm gonna trim the masking tape at the top and the bottom of my paper but I'm not trimming right against the edge of my paper I need a little bit for the next class when I peel this masking tape off the reason that we're taping our paper up in the shape of a tree is so that our trees stay white when we paint the watercolor and that's how you create those white birch trees okay so now the next step is to take a pencil and to trace the edges of your masking tape just go right along the edge and follow all the way around each of your trees and each of your branches and try and stay very very close to the masking tape almost like you're tracing a pattern for a circle right against the edge and you don't have to press real hard with your pencil and make dark lines small or light lines will work just fine um, the, t the watercolor paint that we use is transparent. You can kind of see through it, so you don't want dark black lines on your painting. All right, so I have one that's already traced, and it looks like this. And the next step is very important. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it a little bit closer. 
And what I want you to do is draw a horizon line. A horizon line is the line where the ground meets the sky. This line right here. And if you notice, your horizon line has to be above the bottom of your shortest trees. If it goes below the bottom of your short tree, then your tree looks like it's floating in the sky. It has to look like it's growing out of the ground, out of the snow. So the horizon line needs to be above, a little bit above the bottom of your tree. So here's one example with just a little bit of snow and a whole bunch of sky. Here's one that's got a little bit more snow. We kind of have a hill sloping down and it has to go right above that shortest tree. So this is my shortest tree, the tree that goes the least amount down on my paper and my horizon line stays right above it. I don't try and get my horizon line real close. I give it a little bit of space. I don't want to mess that up. And then I have this example too where you can see the horizon line. It kind of angles down almost an ang a, almost a diagonal wavy line and that's okay too. So when you draw your horizon line you're going to draw right over the masking tape and I'm going to start right here in the middle where my shortest tree is and I'm just going to put a little mark going across the bottom of my tree and see how far up from the edge of the bottom edge of the tree it is. I don't want to put it real close. I don't want to put it right here because that's really really cutting it close with the paint. What if I go over my pencil line a little bit with the paint? Then I could really mess it up. And now I can just finish my horizon line to the left and finish it to the right. And I could slope it down or I can make it more horizontal and even. And you don't want this line really dark either because this is the edge of your snow. So don't forget to draw your horizon line. Um, if we miss drawing our horizon line, then a lot of people tend to paint below their lowest tree. They're not paying attention or they just simply forget. And then I can't fix that. There's no way to fix a floating tree in the sky with this, the paper. A lot of people think, oh, well, I'll just tape over it. Well, the paint's already there, so the paint doesn't go away. So you really need to draw this horizon line. This is a very important step. Draw that horizon line before you paint. Now you're going to get yourself a scrap piece of paper to go under your work. You're going to need a water basin and a watercolor tray. And at this point, you need to decide, are you using warm colors or are you going to use cool colors? And then I want you to do a wash. Flood your paper with water and paint, and I want you to go either from light to dark or dark to light. So for instance, I have two examples of warm colors here. And on this one, I went dark up to medium to light at the top. And on this one, I started dark at the top and worked my way light. So you can kind of see the variation. You get to decide what you want. And then here's the cool colors. And I did dark at the top, medium in the middle, and light against the horizon line. So on this one, I think I'll do cool colors. But I'll do dark at the bottom and work my way up light. So I'm going to start with a purple, which is the darker, cool color. And I'm going to paint right against that horizon line. I don't want to paint below it, because then I would make a big, big mistake that can't be fixed. So I'm going to paint right along the top edge of that horizon line that I drew very carefully. Add lots of water, flood my paper, lots of water, a little bit of paint. Paint can be transparent. Rinse my paper off. Now I'm going to go to blue because cool colors are blue, greens, and purples. And green's the lightest, so the green's going to be at the top of my paper. I'm going to overlap my colors a little bit, let them run and bleed together and create a third color. So the purple and the blue will kind of create a blue-violet. And now I'm going to rinse my paper shop and do my light color, green. And I'm going to start this at the tippy top of my paper so that it's a nice clean green color. And then when I bring it down to the blue, I'll let the two mix. I'm afraid that if I start down here at the blue and work my way up, it'll never really go back to green. It'll always be kind of a blue-green. So I'm going to overlap these two, let them run together, and I have um, finished my paper for the first day. So that's all you have to do on the first day. Create your composition with the masking tape, outline with pencil, don't forget your branches, and then add a horizon line and paint either warm or cool colors with a watercolor wash, light to dark or dark to light. On the second day, you're going to start to create those black smudges on the white tree, the white birch trees. The white birch trees have those nice black smudges in the bark. So we're going to create that on the second day. So the second day, you'll get your painted paper back. 
and it'll look like this. It'll have tape on it and your paint. And the first thing you want to do is pull the tape off. So hopefully you left yourself a little bit of tape to pull on. I like to pull from the bottom up because I can kind of control and see if the paper's tearing because you don't want to tear your paper. So I use one hand to kind of pull the tape back slowly and I use the other hand to hold the paper down. So I'm going to move my left hand towards the tape as my right hand pulls the tape off. And I'm not yanking it and I'm not pulling really fast. I'm working slow so that I don't mess up my painting. So there's one tree. And I'll do the same for this tree. Left hand holds the paper down, the right hand pulls up. When you're pulling this masking tape, especially the big trees, if you just need to pull one piece of masking tape at a time and that works better for you, that's fine too. Now I have a little bit of paint here in the middle where the two masking tape seams ran together. The paint seeped through. I must have not pressed hard enough, but that's okay. When I smudge it with black, that'll probably, um, some of that will get covered up. Maybe not all of it, but that's okay. We can't, it can't be perfect all the time. Okay, so now I have my white trees and they're outlined with pencil so I know where the edges are. Um, I got a little bit of, looks like pencil smudges with my fingertips, so I'm gonna kinda go and erase those a little bit. I think I traced the edges of my masking tape a little too dark, so the pencil's starting to smudge with my fingers. And I like to keep that nice and clean. Okay. So now I'm ready to smudge. You're going to get yourself a small, small amount of black paint and a piece of cardboard. And the cardboard is what you're going to use to smudge or smear that black paint across the edge of your paper. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to take my cardboard and I'm going to dip it in the paint just a little bit. And now I'm going to kind of tap it on the side of the lid and get some of that paint off there because you don't want a lot of paint on your cardboard. You just want a small, small amount of paint. And since I'm right handed, I'm going to work on this tree and work my way across. That way I don't smudge or, or smooth, smear the paint. And now I'm going to take my cardboard, line it up against my pencil line, the edge of my tree, and I'm going to carefully pull this across. And if I have too much paint on my cardboard, it'll pull just a black line across, and we, I don't want that. I, just, I want it smeared just a little bit across. And I'm not going to re-dip my cardboard. I'm going to pull it again across. Maybe that one I pull all the way across, and this one I stop. I'll turn my paper, and I'll go across the other direction. And I haven't re-dipped my cardboard yet. Now I'm going to flip my cardboard over, use the other side. Oh, see, and that's a lot of black paint. It's almost too much. So be real careful when you're pulling across. If it starts to be too much, just stop pulling. All right. So let's see. All right, my cardboard's almost dry now. I've used most of the paint off of it, so I'm going to re-dip. And this time I'm just going to take a little bit from this side here. I'm not going to dip it in the big smudge of black paint. And pull this across, turn my paper, pull across the other direction. And that's starting to look much nicer. Here in the beginning, it just doesn't always look so nice. And now for the tree branches, I just put my cardboard inside the tree branch and pull down. And it's okay if it overlaps into the tree bark a little bit. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to dip again and move on to a new tree. And rotate and I'm just pulling across back and forth. This is the part that I want you to take your time on. I want you to spend, put your most effort into because this is what really, really makes your painting beautiful and what makes it look very much like a white birch tree. 
So if you're smearing black paint all the way across, almost like here, then it just really takes away from the beauty of the tree and it doesn't look as real. So you really, really do want a very small amount of black on your cardboard. You don't want a lot. So really be stingy with that paint and tap it on the side of the lid and get some of that off there. It, it would be better not to have a lot than have just big, huge, ugly black smudges. You can see that's almost too much there too. Pull that across diagonally on the branches. There we go. Okay. Let's see, I'm not real happy with that. That's just too much black paint. I'm disappointed in that tree. So let's see. Let's see if I can do a better one with less paint. Oops. branches. And just one final tree left. And look at all the paint that's still left on this lid. I have barely used any of that black paint. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to really, really hardly use any black. And just smear it across. Smudge it across. All right. And there is my winter scene of white birch trees and snow, and I used cool colors for my background. This cardboard can be recycled, and you'll just put the lid back. Thank you.